First World War lasted for four years and killed just under 40 million people and is considered one of the most devastating events of the 20th century. What's overlooked, however, by many people is that from the start of 1918 to the end of 1920, an outbreak of the strain H1N1 of influenza killed at least 50 million people, maybe as many as 100 million. It's often referred to as the Spanish flu, however, the original source of the infection is unknown, although there are a great many theories out there. What is not in doubt is the role that the First World War played both in the outbreak and its spread around the world and the severity of that outbreak. The reason for it being called the Spanish flu is largely down to press censorship at the time of the First World War. It meant that casualties in those countries involved in the conflict were either not reported or drastically underreported. Whereas in Spain, which is not directly involved in the war, the outbreak was fully reported, leading to people to think that Spain was most severely affected by the outbreak, hence naming it the Spanish flu. The form of influenza is a rather unusual disease in that most people who die from the effect of the disease are not all those you would normally associate as being vulnerable. Most diseases tend to have a high mortality rate on both the elderly and young children. With Spanish flu, the majority of the deaths were those of young adults, with relatively few deaths among the children or the elderly. There are two major reasons for this. Firstly, older adults have been exposed to a similar virus about 30 years earlier, and may have been resistant to the Spanish flu. The second is something called a cytokine storm, where a healthy adult identifies an infection and releases white blood cells to fight the infection. When these get to the site of the infection, they re release cytokines, but it's a message saying, please, we need more help, which in turn triggers more white blood cells. When they get to the site, they continue the loop. This overreaction to infection is normally regulated by the body, but in this case, it failed to work. The children and the elderly, their immune systems are not generally efficient enough to damage their own body. But for young adults, and especially in this case, pregnant women, overreaction could be frequently lethal, especially if this happens in the lungs, where an accumulation of white blood cells may actually block the airways. Please us with the role that the war played in the outbreak. By placing all the soldiers together in cramped, unsanitary conditions, this allowed the disease to spread quickly between the soldiers, especially where a minorly affected soldier would expected to cope with it and stay at the front with his fellows, whereas acute cases we grouped together and shipped home for treatment. These returning soldiers then rapidly spread the disease from the civilian population all around the world, from America to India, and only island nations like Japan, which was not directly involved in the land war against Germany, and they instituted a form of quarantine once the outbreak was identified, avoided a high percentage of casualties. The number of people that were killed were also affected by the fact that early on the disease mutated into a more lethal form, and that war had also caused shortages of food, so malnutrition both amongst the soldiers and the general population, making them more vulnerable to disease. But one of the critical issues may have been the use of poison gas like chlorine. Many soldiers actually survived gas attacks, however they were left with permanently scarred lungs, which were both more vulnerable to infections and left them with lungs which were no longer functioning properly. All of these factors meant that the death rate of those infected may have been as high as 1 in 5. But with all these issues around flu viruses, especially now with the number of people using continental air travel, any new flu virus can spread quickly around the world, which is why there is so much concern about the potential threat of a new virus or a mutated one. So that's why flu is such a serious issue.